and welcome to another rambling review from Adventures in TV Land. For today's adventure, we're going to take a short look at Jesus Revolution. Now, Jesus Revolution is a movie that I had heard very little about. I just happened to see a, a trailer for it in movie theaters several months ago, and I ended up going with a family member to go see it, and I was very pleasantly surprised by the film. The movie takes place, it is set in California during the late 1960s, early 1970s. Central character, although it's you don't really realize that until later on, is a man by the name of Greg Laurie. Now, Greg is a pretty influential pastor on the West Coast out in California. I mean, he's written a lot of books. I believe when I was in college 20-some years ago, I, I think I read one or two of his books. This is kind of his story, sort of his story of how he became a pastor. You don't realize that until later on in the movie, though, the way the story is told, because it's set during the time frame of the beginning of the, the Jesus movement, the Jesus people, during the late 1960s, early 70s, when the hippie culture was going full throttle. There were several, hip a lot of hippies, they kind of turned their back on the drug culture and everything else as part of that. And they actually became became very devout religious people uh, because of that movement. They were, they were seeking, they were seeking God, and they found him in Jesus, and so they became Christians. And this is kind of the story of the Jesus movement, the the Jesus people that, that were, it was a very, it was a very large movement at that time, and so instrumental during that time period that actually Time Magazine did a cover story on the movement. Uh, this is kind of the story of all that. So Greg, he lives in a trailer with his mother at the beach. Not completely homeless, but they're kind of vagrants in a way. And Greg is based, even though he lives with his mother, he base in his just a teenager, he basically is taking care of his mother for the most part. She goes out and is always on the lookout for another, another husband, another, you know, potential mister. And her heart is broken out all the time in the process. And Greg ends up having to take her home, take care of her, and help her overcome all that. He becomes more central as the film goes on. Initially, you think the story is going to revolve around two of the other characters. One is Chuck Smith, who is played in this film by Kelsey Grammer. And Chuck is a pastor at this church in California. He sees what's going on in the world, and he, he you know, he just says, you know, if only God would bring me a, a hippie so I could ask him some questions and find out how, actually how to reach these people and find out actually what's going on. And lo and behold, a hippie is brought into his life, but this hippie is unlike any other hippie he has ever met before. His name is Lonnie Frisbee, and Lonnie is a he is a hippie, but he is a former hippie in the sense he no longer does drugs. He's turned his back on all that, but he does. He mentors to other hippies and to the hippie culture. He's a part of that. Yeah, he's a part of the communal living of all that. He was, he's was. he been there. He's done that. He, he almost overdosed on the LSD. He had an experience because of that, and he had, began a relationship with God because of that. So Lonnie and Chuck, they kind of come together. Chuck's church starts growing, and as it does so, Greg is eventually brought into this. Uh, he's in love with a young woman ends up joining this church as a result of that Greg eventually joins the church and this is kind of the story of how his ministry began on the backdrop of the Jesus movement so that's the synopsis of this like I said I did not hear I did not see a lot of advertising for this film beforehand before it came out it was released in movie theaters I knew very little about it I had heard of the Jesus people uh, and the Jesus movement uh, from my own upbringing I read a little bit about it back when I was in college kind of the influence it had so I was a little bit familiar with that movement, but I did not know Greg Laurie's story. I did not know about Chuck Smith or Lonnie Frisbee beforehand, and I did. I learned a little bit about them watching this film. This film is very well acted. It is put together really well, especially for the type of movie it is. I mean, it's a lower budget film. It doesn't have a huge cast. The fact that they have Kelsey Grammer, you know, is one of the leads in the film, so that's that's really positive. But I mean, acting all around is really well done. Not only that, but unlike a typical, what people would say is like a Christian movie, this movie doesn't necessarily really have a come to Jesus moment. You know, there's no moment in the film where they're trying to get people to, to make a point and then have, you know, the audience convert to Christianity, anything like that. That happens a lot of times in Christian movies. That is not the case here. This is a very real story. It's very grounded. The production values are very well done. It is told in a way it does not come across proselytizing or preachy. 
It is just telling the story of these individuals at this point in time when this film takes place in history. And it does a really good, an excellent job at that. I think, I mean, a lot of people, I think they would be surprised if they gave this movie a chance just to watch it. Um, they'd be surprised afterwards. I highly recommend it. Especially, I mean, if you are someone who is of the Christian faith, you will probably enjoy it. Even if you're not, if you just enjoy good films, smaller films that don't have to have a lot of huge production value cost and tons of extras and special effects and things like that. The story is well done. It's a smaller story that is very well done. This has been another rambling review from Adventures in TV Land. Thank you for watching. Until next time, that's a wrap.